Alright, well, hello there everyone. This is uh, Exodarian here, coming to you with a New Year's AI update. I suppose you could see it that way. 0 0.9 has been a bit of a problem with regards to AI, let's be honest about that. I specifically wasn't really ready to um, put in all the new AI updates for, uh, for 0 0.9, especially with relation to all of the battalion changes that have been taking place. I was pretty much busy with uh, fixing a lot of the battalion movement problems that have been plaguing the game or the mod, however you want to call it, for quite a while. And yeah, to be honest, I was also busy with real life, so uh, I really didn't have the motivation or time to put in all the effort required to make the AI completely playable as it used to be before, at least for the Gerudo and the Hylians. But I have been going over all of the changes after 0.9 was released. I've I've watched the AI play quite a few times again, I've ran through, I would say, at least a hundred iterations at this point, and the AI is playing better than it ever has before. For the Gerudo, it, it does at least. Uh, I will work on the Hylians uh, next, and I don't think that will take very long, maybe, maybe one or two days at most, because I just have to implement the new settings for the Hylians, but most of these changes and fixes are going to work for all of the factions from now on so they're gonna have a massive impact on all of the factions that will be released and i have been debating a little bit on which faction to do after the highlands but i think i'll do the zora because they're somewhat similar uh, with regards to building style so i think when i'm happy with the highlands and the gerudo then i can probably get the zora out within a week as well i don't think that should take very long but uh, who knows, most of the, the, the real core stuff is, is really done at this point. Or, well, it's always a bit difficult to say because there's so many things I still would like to add, but the real core gameplay of how I want them to function, that is all working steadily right now. And so I'll be going over all of the changes in this video. For those who are, uh, who are interested, I'll try to skip all of the more mundane stuff, but there are some pretty uh, major changes. And also another, Thing I would like to add is that the development of Hyrule Conquest has been going faster than ever before as well. With uh, Ascaris on the team and also Odysseus on the team, we have been really hammering in changes pretty much every day. And so when version 1 comes around, you should probably expect a lot of new changes again. So uh, I'm really happy with the new UI as well that Ascaris has put in. It, uh, it looks really good in my opinion. Also Nef, how he really last minute he put in all of this uh, texture work really awesome askers has also been putting out a lot of new changes uh, and fixes for the new uh, battalion ui because there were still some errors with the system so that's all great so it's not just gonna be my changes they're going to be in the next hotfix although hotfix i i would actually call it a patch at this point because there's it's not it's no longer just a hotfix with all of the changes that have taken place over the past two weeks I believe it has been since um, 0 0.9 release. But anyway, I've, I've talked enough for uh, for this intro, so I'll just, I'll just go over number one, which is already a pretty big difference, which is attack walk, because attack walk was broken in 0 0.9 and it has now been fixed. And also for those who have played AI matches in 0 0.9, the AI makes use of a lot of attack walking and so that was broken so for all of those people out there who have been commenting on this and have noticed this problem this now works again so both for the AI and for the player attack walk functions properly again so another thing I've gone over is uh, a lot of the config data has been changed to accommodate all of the new battalion changes for citizens traders all of the other buildings for the Gerudo have been edited so they now properly go through the phases and, um, and try to balance their resources and their uh, recruitment as much as possible. And also, of course, for the Grudo playstyle. There is now also proper AI difficulty based upon decision-making speed. So one thing I really didn't want to do was to give the AI bonuses when you go to hard or very hard. I actually wanted there to be some change with regards to actual efficiency and competency of the AI so actually before I before I go into that I first have to mention that sandbox mode 
is doesn't really do anything at this point, so I probably advise not to use sandbox mode. Uh, maybe I will implement that later. But uh, from very easy to very hard, there's now a significant difference. You will notice. Um, you won't notice it instantly, but probably when you play a few matches against maybe medium, hard, or very hard, uh, and also against very easy, you will definitely notice the difference between those uh, difficulties now. So yeah, I, I think that's uh, I think that's very nice to have in Hero uh, Conquest finally to have some difficulty settings that make sense. Another thing that has been changed is the population settings, which was still set to the old settings, which was, I believe, a maximum of 300 by default. But this is absolutely not what we want to be going for now that we ha are using battalion count rather than actual entity count on the, on the battlefield. And so uh, the default has now been set to 100 battalions. I've tested this for the past two weeks with the AI, like I said, quite a few times and I had, in, ha I had it set initially to 70, but now it's set to 100. And so uh, if you want to, you can still choose unlimited. There are a few other options. It goes between 50 and unlimited. Uh, so if you still want to play around with unlimited amount of battalions, you can still do that. The option is still there, but keep in mind that the the default gameplay for Hyrule Conquest and also the AI gameplay is going to be settling somewhere around the 100 mark. It's not that the AI will break if you pick unlimited, but there is a certain amount of citizens the AI would normally pick, you know, or a certain amount of traders. There is some percentage work going on there, but there's also some hard coding going on there to make sure that you're not gonna have the AI create, let's say, 50 citizen battalions because there's just no point in, in doing that in, in the current state of the game with the new balancing that Odysseus added as well. So another big change that I worked on was the citizen battalions and like I mentioned before battalion movement is still not perfect. I have some ideas for it in the future how I want to change that but I haven't really gotten to that yet but for gathering battalions at the moment, all of their orders, all of their unit AI orders have been changed so they can now properly function without getting stuck on, on buildings and all that kind of uh, stuff. You don't want your citizens getting stuck when, when you order them to gather or build something. So that should all be properly working right now. I have not seen the AI have any problems with it anymore, so I'm quite happy with that. Another problem which was present as well is that Gerudo buildings gave way, way too many uh, bonuses when it came to population, so houses and civil centers. So I've also adapted that. Still have to do that for the other factions, of course, but that doesn't take too much time. I think I can just adapt the same, um, the same values to those for the most part, at least for the for those factions. There's been some some edits in the traders as well. I believe Odysseus also made some changes to the traders already, so uh, so keep that in mind. But traders should be more viable to get. Every individual trader costs more. I believe they cost 100 rupees by default. Well, default for for your standard factions, I would say they cost 100 rupees. And maybe Odysseus will decide that across the board they'll cost 100 rupees for all the factions from now on. But yeah, so those traders will be more efficient and they'll give more in return to what they did previously. We have been thinking about removing traders. I've been talking with Askers about perhaps removing traders, but that is one of those far-fetched ideas that we might not really see in the near future at all. So this is just a topic for discussion for those uh, who would like to know. So right now I'm going to probably in my opinion, one of the biggest issues that the AI had, which I completely reworked, which is mostly for advanced construction and market construction. And what I mean with advanced uh, construction is any building that fits outside the standard. So houses, fields, drop sites, those kind of buildings are pretty standard. Almost every faction has that. And so there's a specific way you would want to, the AI wants to build those. 
but most of the other buildings can be placed anywhere within uh, their territory. Buildings that just recruit things, uh, so barracks or a blacksmith, those kind of buildings, they don't really require particular sets or specific placements, you know, things like that. But the market obviously has a specific placement and specific behavior. So that has been completely reworked and also advanced construction has been completely reworked. So the AI will no longer find themselves stuck when it comes to placement, for example. There have been many other changes to the market construction and also to the advanced construction, or let's just say they sometimes they used to get stuck in, this gets a little bit technical, but within a queue system, they used to get stuck. And right now with a combination of the new placement rework, the chance that that happens is pretty close to 0%. If they uh, were to get stuck on something, there would be a very good reason for that. And so you will no longer see the AI not being able to place a building while as a player you look at it and you go, well, there's definitely some, there's definitely a spot right in the middle there. In the previous version, the AI wouldn't, sometimes wouldn't recognize that it could build there, but now the AI does recognize it can build there. So those issues should no longer be present. So that, that is actually a, a really big deal, especially on, on uh, maps with where the AI has less space to build. Invulnerable units can no longer be knocked back. This ha has caused some issues in the past where, for example, units that are just being recruited with, the new, with that recruitment system where they walk out of the building. Sometimes it was very rare, but I've seen it happen that an area attack caused those units to be knocked back and that also causes a little bit of damage and then they that causes errors because those units are supposed to be invulnerable so invulnerable units can no longer be knocked back which is uh, another fix i have completely reworked and fixed the hero recruitment system so the ai will now properly recruit three heroes due to the new hero system so there's a lot going into that but i i won't go in to too much detail because otherwise this video is going to be like 30 minutes or something but anyway let's just say those those heroes are now properly adapted to the new ai and the new battalion system and new population settings all of that stuff as well so you'll you should see the ai be much more frequent with hero recruitment there were a few bugs still in place where you the moment you researched heroes at the start of the game that you could not instantly recruit them that was actually a bug which I had to fix and there was another bug with hero limitations and also titan limitations where if you recruited them the game somehow recognized that, the, that you had five heroes in on the field and then you could no longer make the heroes for the entirety of the game there was another bug which I uh, which I fixed for this uh, for this patch I have completely well not not entirely but I've reworked a part of the queue system and what I mean with the, the queue system is the recruitment queues it's mostly for the AI but what happens right now is that the queue will not leave the building until those units have completely gone through their intro motions so un until the moment they get converted to you as the player up until that point the queue will remain in the building and this allows for a lot more accurate checking by the AI and it also had some potential bugs that this could cause but that's uh, also a pretty pretty big deal for especially for the AI now I have two more points to make which is that the attacking ratios for the AI have been redone it's all now completely based on battalions also how the AI takes into account the amount of enemies that are on the field and when it will decide to retreat, when it will decide to attack. Those have been adapted. And one final thing, which has also been a, a big problem in, in previous AI iterations, is that sometimes, especially on mountainous maps like Death Mountain, the AI didn't recognize that it placed checkpoints inside mountains and that has now been fixed. It's pretty much a foolproof fix for every map that will be created from now on. The previous iteration did cover water areas. So for example, in Garuda Oasis, 
the AI would make sure that the checkpoints would not be on water. But mountains weren't covered yet. But also, aside from mountains, any other area that we might ever create from now on will now no longer be an issue when it comes to checkpoint generation for the AI. I think that's the really the final issue that I uh, wanted to address. It's it's a it's a massive list of changes just for the AI. So I hope you're really looking forward to uh, to checking the AI, AI out. I really think they're going to be a challenge, especially very hard is going to be a challenge for for the average player. And I don't think I could beat my very hard AI in a single player match, but then again, I'm not I'm not the best RTS player out there, so I'm sure that there are some hardcore RTS players out there who could easily beat the very hard AI once they start to understand the mechanics of the game. But uh, our very hard AI is definitely not a pushover, especially if you go against them in a 1v1. So yeah guys, that's all I really wanted to talk about. I believe you can expect this patch to hit somewhere within the upcoming week. I'm not entirely sure. It depends a bit on what uh, Nef wants and the other team members, if they still have a few things they would like to add to this patch. But another thing that we have already talked about is that we are planning to have more frequent patches to, to come to you as, as a player, rather than having something release every few months. We would like to release multiple patches within each release. At least that is the plan. Of course, we don't really know if this is going to actually take place or how often we're going to do this. It really depends. Once again, because at the end of the day, maybe not for Nef, but for us, this is something we do in our spare time when uh, when we want to. But I mean, of course, we are passionate about the mod, but we also have our real life things. And sometimes we're just not motivated to, to work on the mod, which in my opinion, that is uh, that should be understandable for most people out there. Aside from that, I hope you're looking forward to the to the new patch. I think this is going to be a, a great addition to 0 0.9. It's really going to at least solidify the AI for a while. And uh, hopefully, within the upcoming months, I'll be able to release the AI for all of the other factions out there. Probably not for literally all the factions, because there are some factions out there, like for example the fairies, which require a lot of extra detail and a very specific playstyle that the AI needs to go for, so that probably will take a little bit longer, but other factions that are rather similar to the Gerudo and the Hylians, those factions can be implemented pretty rapidly now. So anyway, that's, uh, that's all I have for you today. Take care guys, and uh, see you next time.